Welcome to Rauta's Take on Norwegian Black Metal from the 90s. It's episode 19 and this time we're heading towards, more or less, towards the underground. Uh, obviously the, all the bigger bands are from the Norway that is behind us with the first episode and all having three different bands per episode and a lot of mid-sized bands are also in the past. That is, if you're looking for some known names, you probably should check out those earlier episodes. With uh, episode 19, we're more or less talking about bands that used to be, used to exist, used to do music and all that stuff. So let's go welcome the bands in question. Fimbulwinder, Sort Vokter and uh, Ilion Nidhogg, which is technically speaking a side project of Ilion and Nidhogg in a form of collaboration. Um, actually, some of the material we're talking about have always already been taken care of with the Ilion episode. So there's a little bit overlapping, but nonetheless, it's worth mentioning as a separate project, much like Sort Vokter. As always with the previous episodes, we'll go from the older to the newest ones, but these are a little bit complicated because sometimes the years are a little bit overlapping, like which really started first and so on. So let's not get stuck in that, but focus on the bands in question. Uh, because of these bands um, in question are more or less side projects or more or less uh, kind of disbanded ones, they are not there is not too much material to talk about. I mean, we're talking about basically one-hit wonders when it comes to album lengths, but of course, much like a lot of older bands, other bands that besides these one, that is, they have demos and what have, whatnot in addition. But like always, with the focus is on the album material, because that is pretty much what defines bands that actually made it to the album length and so forth, which isn't always the case with a lot of bands here. So, Fimble Winter, uh, already something that, you know, a lot of people kind of like have forgotten because they haven't been active for already for 30 years. Um, I remember hearing them back in the roughly late 90s, can really pinpoint more accurately than that, but I'm saying somewhere around 1998 or so, give or take. Um, and this one comes from the territory that is, was, I mean, was explained or introduced to me as a side project of things, a side adventure, or side mission, you know, just a band with the bigger names. And of course, this came up as a Shagrat of Dimu Borger side project. But technically speaking, this existed before Dimu Borger. And at least if it's, uh, if we can trust Metal Archives information here, this was before Shagrat actually joined Dimu Borger. Maybe there's a little bit different, only a year or so, but nonetheless, worth mentioning because Timu Borger started more or less in 1993 and this was already 1992 and of which they have this demo rehearsal tape. But like I said, we're not really touching that. First of all, um, obviously I don't have that big a demo catalog here and secondly, would make very too lengthy videos. So we're talking about the Servants of Sorcery album from 1994 uh, which is their only album, and like I said, 30 years ago. And I guess joining uh, Dimo Burger was pretty much like the nail in the coffin for Fimblewinder. Now, Servants of Sorcery, as much I could remember it before, you know, getting uh, revisiting the whole thing here, was like, okay, it's a, an album with actually one good song, and the rest is very, very mediocre. 1990s Norwegian black metal, and revisiting this now, mind you, remastered version. Uh, curious it just happened, this is because this is like 2023 version. And um, yeah, I felt exactly like that, like back then, like there is this one good song called Black Metal Storm. I like it because it's effective, I mean the name kind of has an impact. It's kind of a stupid if you really think about it, like what the hell is Black Metal Storm? It's almost like the Man of War level of thing, you know, your metal band singing about metal and all that stuff. But then again, a lot of pop musicians get away with all that, so maybe we should give these guys a slack. My, my point here is, back in, the back in the days I remember I actually liked that song and the rest, not so much. Now if you take a look at this list, I mean there's only seven tracks and that includes a cover and an intro, so not too much material really. Um, as back in, the, back in the days, nowadays also, a lot of these songs are kind of a mediocrity in my opinion, so I don't really 
Um, I don't even pretend to understand. I would like why people give it this ninety percent one person on average. I mean, if you remove the nostalgia out of the game, none of these tracks are not that good. They were not that in the 90s. They most certainly can't handle the comparison nowadays. Why so? Because a lot of those riffs are just like very mid, like nowadays people would say. That is, they kind of, of course, maintain the feeling of early Norwegian black metal, the second wave and all. But none of them are really like, wow, this is inspiring. I mean, whether you compare it to bands like Dark Throne or Saturicon, Enslaved, Birdsum, Immortal, etc. You get the feeling like, okay, this is not really on par with that. Actually, even though I'm not the big fan of early Dimmu Borker stuff, uh, I would even say this pales in comparison to those albums as well, because there's like a different level of songwriting. But that is not to say this album is without merits. More or so, it's more about curiosity towards this band, which, like, hey, Shagrat's stepping stone into the world's biggest black metal band, Dimmu Borker. And you can only imagine the level, you know, from stepping up this demo level band to the band that was growing up all the time and becoming a bigger... I mean, it's an interesting career, really. Uh, and Fimbleweeder is more like a side note these days. It's one of those forgotten bands that you are, like, cool if you know it but then again it doesn't really matter if you didn't because like I said the music isn't that um, important now it's impossible obviously to say how the band would have evolved if given more time and if uh, Shagrat never joined Dimmu Borger and all that stuff could Fimble Winter have become one of the more important key factors I mean starting as early as 1992 and having their album already out in 1994 maybe quite likely even given some of the uh, lineup members and all that stuff who were part of the scene more or so already back in the early 90s. But of course it's hard, it's impossible to say which way it would have gone. Uh, I guess we could just conclude saying it doesn't really matter if they became a dysfunction thing disbanding after this album because like I said, we all know the rest is history and Dibu Burger paved the way with Track Red and the rest of the guys whereas Fimble Winter just ceased to exist and was not really to be missed. Which leads us to the second project of today. And this is curiously good because it involves Needhawk and Eeldyarn, which both have other bands. I mean, even overlapping ones like Sword Folk, that are the third band in this episode. Now, Eeldyarn is, of course, known mostly for his work in Eeldyarn. But a lot of people you already might know, he was part of Thou Shalt Suffer and even Emperor Live. So he was already, you know getting along with those guys who became one of the biggest bands in Norway, that is Emperor, and you know, of course, So Shall Suffer and all those names had a uh, kind of a importance, had a phase towards going Emperor. Now, Nidhogg didn't really go uh, that far with his bands. I mean, all these names are more or less relatively unknown, even his own projects. But that is not to say he's without merits, because in fact, uh, Ildia and Nidhogg collaboration did a couple of pretty cool EPs early 90s or mid 90s, called Norse EP and Svartfraud 1996. And these two EPs are very raw black metal. I mean, I would go as far as to say, if even if we include or exclude the production values, uh, there are some of the highlight moments and some of the best raw black metal out there coming from Norway. Um, very much like Iliarn, so obviously you have the Neil Yarn, you know, importance with this one, but still it's also a little bit different. I would even say that Iliarn and Nidhogg um, collaboration EPs are better than what Iliarn uh, by himself ever did, and I do happen to like Iliarn albums, so there is that. I would even say this is some of the higher percentage material, but then again, it's also something that is not going to you know, um, make that important to a lot of people. Probably it's way too raw, way too primitive for a lot of Norwegian fans, especially if you're coming from a background who goes for, you know, bands such as Enslaved, Amber, or Saturicon and all that stuff. I mean, I guess the closest bigger raw end of names coming from Norway would be Dark Throne's early career. But 
Ilion Needhawk or Ilion or Swords Walker for that matter are way more, way more primitive and kind of a more acquired taste. So came as a surprise that a few years later when they did their only real album called Hadanger Vida, which is by the way is an area in Norway, a really beautiful one. I got to visit it last year when I was traveling from Bergen to Oslo. Um, this became as a like a synthesizer album. I wouldn't call it really an ambient, but I get why it's labeled as such. Nor is it really a dungeon synth album, but it's kind of a between those um, types, if you will. I mean, there's certain level of stuff that is kind of like between this and more tea stuff and say dark ambient. But this is something like you have very soothing landscapes, fully instrumental, no drums and whatever. There are some drum machine parts here and there. But it's mostly just soothing synthesizer music. Whether you call it ambient or just keyboard music, synthesizer music, doesn't really matter. You get the point. So they change from really raw and primitive black metal into something that is like totally different stuff. And this is something that I already um, went through with my Ildir and Worst to Best, which I did uh, a couple of years ago. So, and the rest of the material, more or less compilation stuff. But if you really want to get, in my opinion, a so-called gold standard of raw end of black metal, apart from Darkthrone and Ildir, well, Norse and Svartfrod EPs are still worth a go. And luckily they are on streaming services. So give them a go. Uh, more like a one-time thing really between these two bold skinny brothers of sorts but i mean definitely worth noting even no known mostly as an underground act a little bit different but very much the same is sword Fokter, the last band of this episode which featured not only ilion and needhawk but a couple of other guys who didn't have too much uh too many other bands to go with now i don't know what exactly happened with these guys but Nonetheless, Surtvokter's only album, Folkloric Necro Metal. I mean, what kind of title is that to begin with? I have it on CD, you might have seen it. Some of my I actually did a classic review of these albums uh, maybe two years ago. And this is uh, not too lengthy an album, but it's very necro. I mean, if you ever heard the term necro sound, referring to very dead and street bare raw primitive sound, this is it. Um, in my opinion, it's a, in a way more raw uh, than a lot of Ildurin material. It's definitely an acquired taste. So I'm kind of surprised to have six reviews averaging 91% on Metal Archives. I mean, it really means we have some connoisseurs here uh, respecting, appreciating this kind of really raw black metal. I mean, I like it a lot. Maybe not 91% a lot, but very close to it. And this is with the kind of horrible drum machine, very necro riffs, very hateful uh, feeling, but also those soothing synthesizer parts. It's like weird animal. It's almost like Ildiorn's a little bit tad bit weird uh, brother or friend, which technically speaking, it's almost that's the case. I would say this is mostly around their level of Ildiorn material. Maybe I would say Ildiorn Needhog EPs are a little bit better than that, but this is better than, you know, Ildiorn on average, or roughly the same level maybe, but nonetheless. Then there's this like weird um, synth track called Fjellstev, which is definitely around the feeling what Hardanger with the by Ildiorn Needhog collaboration is all about. Very soothing, more like beautiful synthesizer track as opposed to very raw, very hateful, uh, inhuman sound, what this album is all about. So an interesting album nevertheless, but very, very acquired taste if you ask me, because you kind of have to embrace the necrotic drum machine and those uh, super raw sound and the very simplistic strip bare-boned riffs. Um, interesting release, and uh, I can under kind of understand very well why this is the only release by the given band. But it's interesting for sure, and if you get to have a look at it, Give it a go. Now, this is uh, my take on uh, Norwegian black metal from the underground. Next episode, something else. Thank you and bye-bye.